Our talk begins in Johnstown, New York, where I have relocated to with my husband about three years ago. Um, at the time, we had about two and a half children, and as a generally responsible, mildly pregnant individual, my first inclination was to contact the local medical practice in order to find a family doctor and pediatrician at our new county of residence. Much to my surprise, every doctor was not accepting new patients, and that happened to be the common response until I was finally able to find an appointment months away. This is the family, my husband, our two lovely daughters, and baby Michael, much like any other family in Fulton County. The fact is, residents in rural areas have a decreased access to care, resulting in poor health outcomes. What is our area all about? Statistically, we have over 1,200 businesses, one airport, our population vacillates at around 55,000, with half residing in rural and the rest in cities and towns. 15.9% are 65 and over, with 21.2% being 17 and younger. Poverty rates and level of educational attainment strongly influence community health. Our county is disproportionately affected by poverty. 16.2% reside under the federal poverty level, as compared to 11.8% in upstate New York, and 15.6% New York statewide. 18.6% live in single parent households as compared to 16.6% in upstate New York and 19.8% New York statewide. 21.9% received Medicaid and 47.6% of children were eligible for free or reduced lunch. Our healthcare landscape. We have one hospital, one urgent care center, 13 primary care clinics, 92 primary care physicians, 19 registered physician assistants, and 20 nurse practitioners. There are 155 registered physicians in Fulton County, as compared to 215 in the rest of the Adirondack Rural Health Network, and 285 New York statewide. Health outcomes, and these are out of 62 counties in New York State. Overall health, 47, Length of life, 48. Quality of life, 49. Health factors, 56. Health behaviors, 50. Clinical care, 53. Social economic, 58. And physical environment, 32. We do enjoy our great outdoors and the many lakes that we have here. In many respects, we're much like any other rural county in the country. Working for the local public health department, we thought, what can we do? Telehealth initiatives may provide a viable solution to the increased need for remote access to care. Telehealth being the overall concept of telemedicine and telemetry components, encompassing remote consultations with doctors, as well as vital statistic equipment. The benefit of telehealth includes evidence-based cost and time effectiveness and may have a major impact on overall health outcomes. Believe it or not, today we are on the cusp of healthcare innovation. The location of this talk, the Fulton Montgomery Community College, happens to be the epicenter of our pilot telehealth initiative. In collaboration with our community stakeholders and with the approval of our County Board of Supervisors, we have received funding from the Medicaid Restructuring Initiative in order to set up telehealth stations at the Fulton Montgomery Community College, Office for the Aging and Youth, and the local Fulton County Public Health Department. As a matter of fact, our first health station is right across this wall here. Basically, we're taking over closets all across the county <laughs> because there are no windows and privacy is a major consideration. An encrypted HIPAA-compliant platform will be utilized to connect our county residents in real time, not a store and forward technology, to a doctor at the Nathan Tower and St. Mary's hospitals, or any other provider of their choice. The server will be housed with the Fulton County IT department for neutrality. Getting back to what the statistics dictate. The leading causes of death in Fulton County are heart disease, cancer, chronic lower respiratory disease, stroke, and unintentional injury 
often alcohol and substance abuse related. Premature deaths are due to cancer, heart disease, chronic lower respiratory disease, unintentional injury, and stroke in that order. Obesity and smoking rates in Fulton County are high, contributing to increased incidence of hypertension, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and stroke. 30.9% of adults in Fulton County are obese, as compared to 27% in upstate New York, as well as 19.5% of public school children, as compared to 16.7% of their upstate New York counterparts. The smoking rate of Fulton County adults has continued to rise from 25% in 2013 to the 29% of adults that you see depicted here, as compared to 17.3% in the rest of upstate New York, resulting in increased hospitalizations, ED visits due to asthma, COPD, and other respiratory conditions. Cancer cont continues to be a local public health priority with ovarian, colorectal, and prostate topping the charts. According to the US Department of Health and Human Services, Fulton County is considered to be a health professional shortage area for primary care, mental health, and dental care. There is hope. According to a recent survey, approximately 70 to 75% of residents of Fulton County have a smartphone. A larger percentage use other technology, such as a laptop, tablet, or personal computer. Let us pause here and think about that for a moment. That statistic is astonishing. Think of its implications. This common thread that unites many indicators and most demographics may potentially have a positive impact on our health outcomes for the remaining residents that are unable to do so, in lieu of socioeconomic, educational connectivity, or other barriers, we are hoping to set up health stations across the county to improve remote access to care for all residents. What we are hoping to achieve here in Fulton County, New York, falls under the spectrum of true prevention, health education, and improved access that may positively impact our health outcomes this is quintessential population health. This initiative has the potential to impact all residents of Fulton County, New York, and is at the forefront of healthcare innovation. Here you may say, well, telehealth initiatives are not new. There are plenty of evidence-based publications with regard to their utility and efficacy all over. So what is the innovation? To that I would respond, this is a viable, sustainable initiative that has the potential to improve remote access to care and have a profound impact on health outcomes while reducing the burden of chronic disease. That within the confines of our given infrastructure, our local public health department may leverage existing resources and act as a linchpin to facilitate the connections between stakeholders, culminating in improved care. Ideally, Fulton County residents will utilize their own smartphones or other technology devices in their homes and throughout the community. Health stations will be available as a supplement when alternate means of access are not available. Connecting to a local healthcare provider ensures continuity of care from remote access to in-person visits while optimizing the local provider panel and reducing burden on physicians. The budget for, the, for this project is minimal as compared to other health initiatives, while the correlating impact is vast. The funding is provided by the regional and Medicaid restructuring plans, as well as other grant monies geared towards, towards health improvement and population health. Fulton County, New York is the fifth most populous region in the Adirondack Rural Health Network. As you now know, it is a rural area with restricted access to care due to a limited provider panel, remote location, and over, overall low population density. The future. According to Clem Bezold, chair and futurist of the Institute for Alternative Futures, in his brilliant vision for Public Health 2030 for NYSECHO, scenario four, community-driven health inequity, that includes a positive public health movement,
communities promoting population health, widespread health consciousness, and a value shift to equity. He's even included telemedicine, my personal favorite. He highlights the necessity for political leaders to include public health on their agenda. The population health initiative discussed today is viable, capable of being sustained long-term, and provides a positive health impact in this region. Healthy People 2020 is committed to the vision of a society in which all people live long, healthy lives. And the outlined initiative may take us one step closer to making this a reality. I will leave you with one final thought. Prevention, education, and access equals population health. Thank you.